morning everyone welcome to part 2 of the lecture 3 under the module 2 so in this lecture we will practice a few more example and this is in continuation to our previous lecture if you recollect in the previous lecture we practice example on the estimation of h by c ratio and o by c ratio of a given fuel when the composition of the given fuel is known apart from that we also practice one example each on the estimation of heating value of solid and a liquid fuel respectively. So, this is in continuation to the previous lecture. In this lecture, we will practice few more example on the concept that is heat of formation of a given fuel as well as how to estimate the emission from the ultimate analysis of a given fuel. Let us begin with the first example. The first example is on the heat of formation which is also known as the heat of combustion. So, in this example, uh, we need to estimate the heat of formation of sawdust. So, the given fuel here is sawdust and its heating value is given as 476 kilojoule per mole and we need to assume the chemical formula of sawdust to be this one. So, with the help of this given data, we need to estimate the heat of formation of a sawdust. So, let us try to solve this example with this given data. So, before we start solving this example, we need to write the stoichiometric equation for the conversion reaction of a sawdust. And we can write the stoichiometric equation for the conversion of sawdust as because we know the chemical formula of sawdust which is given here in the example CH1 and oxygen is 0.617 and once this particular fuel which is given here as sawdust is combusted. So, this particular formula here it represents the sawdust and once it undergoes the combustion in presence of oxygen it produces carbon dioxide and this much mole of water and this heat of reaction here because here given as the heating value as this one. So, which is 476 kilojoule per mole and here we have mentioned as a negative value because as we know the combustion is the exothermic reaction. So, it will evolve this much amount of the energy as per the stoichiometric equation and to balance this equation we need around like 1.0 to 9 moles of oxygen to combust this particular fuel completely to produce this composition of product. And now with the help of this stoichiometric equation, we have to estimate the heat of formation of a sawdust. If you recollect our discussion in one of the lecture, we discuss about the estimation of heat of combustion from the given reaction. So, the same concept will be utilizing here to solve this example that is the heat of reaction which we also termed as heat of combustion. So, that can be represented in the following way that is summation of heat of formation of products. minus summation of 
heat of formation of reactants. So, once you know the heat of formation of the product, so the product here is CO2 water right and the heat of formation of the reactant. So, there are two reactant that is this is the given fuel and this is termed as a oxidant. So, sometimes we use air, sometimes we use pure oxygen. So, in general we termed it as a oxidant. Once we know the heat of formation of this reactant, then with the help of that we can easily estimate the heat of formation of the sawdust. So, here the heat of reaction it is given as minus 476 kilojoule per mole and the heat of formation of the product. So, as I mentioned there are two products here like CO2 and water. Once we know the heat of formation of the product and the heat of formation of the reactant, the difference between these two values will lead to our answer of the heat of formation of the sawdust. So, here if you see the heat of formation of the product, it is uh, represented as the this much moles of water is getting produced and the heat of formation of the water is minus 241.5. So, this is the value which we have obtained from one of the table where the heat of formation of the different reactant is tabulated and the values given in the same table are used here for the estimation of this heat of formation of the sawdust. However, for the convenience purpose, I will just reproduce this table here uh, if required. So, if you remember uh, the table, they are the name of the compound was given along with the heat of formation at 25 degree C and the values were given in the kilojoule per mole and the different compounds like H2O, CO2, CO, CH4, again calcium carbonate and NH3. So, the heat of formation of the water was given as minus 241.5 here 393.5 minus 74.8 and for it is 0 minus 1211.8 and for NS3 it was minus 82.5. So, we are just taking help of this table to solve this example. So, the heat of formation of the water as we just discussed uh, before. So, this value we have obtained from this given table plus the heat of formation of CO2. Here it is a 1 mole of CO2 that is 1 into. So, the heat of formation of the CO2 is uh, given as minus 393.5. So, this is about the heat of formation of the product minus the heat of formation of the reactant. So, here there are two reactant that is the given fuel as well as the oxidant. So, we have to estimate the heat of formation of this given fuel that is right and then the heat of formation of oxygen. So, this is nothing but equal to 0 and once we do this small multiplication here, then we will get the value of 
this term that is heat of formation of sawdust as just after doing this small multiplication the value comes out to be around 163.0125 minus 393.5 and plus 476 because this will be equal to 0 totally and then the final answer would be in the form of minus 80.5 kilojoule per mole. So, this is basically the heat of formation of the sawdust. I hope this is clear how to estimate the heat of formation of a given fuel. For that this simple concept uh, which we have discussed earlier in one of the lecture, the same concept can be used to solve this example of heat of formation of the any given fuel. The second example, it is based on the estimation of emission from the ultimate analysis data of a given fuel. So, here the fuel is given as coal and the composition of the coal on mass basis is given here and this coal is consumed in a power plant at a rate of 2000 kg per day. Therefore, to remove the sulphur dioxide emission, the limestone flue gas desulphurization process was used and the efficiency of this particular desulphurization process was around 98 percent. So, with the help of this given data, we need to estimate the amount of ash which is entering the plant per year because the daily consumption of the coal is given here. So, based on that we need to estimate the amount of ash which is entering the plant per year in the sense because this particular coal has ash content of around 8.5 percent. So, if this much amount of the coal is getting used in the power plant, so on that basis we have to just estimate like the amount of ash which is entering the plant on yearly basis. And second thing is like we need to estimate the annual amount of sulphur dioxide emission from the plant that is before and after this desulphurization unit. If all sulphur react with oxygen during combustion process. So, this is the condition here that all the sulphur which is present in the coal is getting combusted in presence of oxygen and it is forming sulphur dioxide as a product. So, with the help of this condition we need to estimate the SO2 emission from the plant that is before and after the desulphurization unit and also we need to estimate the amount of carbon dioxide emission produced from the sulphur dioxide scrubbing unit or we can also say the process. So, now with the given condition as well as given data, we need to estimate these three terms. So, let us begin with the solution of this example. Here the ultimate analysis of coal is given as 67 percent, 67 percent carbon, 5 percent H, 9 percent O, 2 percent nitrogen, sulphur and 8.5 percent ash and 7 percent moisture. Along with that the coal consumption
ऑन डेली बेसिस इज 2000 केजी पर डे एंड द अजम्पन इज कंप्लीट कंबशन ऑफ सल्फर इज टेकिंग प्लेस इन द प्रोसेस सो द सल्फर इज गेटिंग कंप्लीटली ऑक्सीडाइज टू फॉर्म एसो टू सो दिस इज द अजम्पन एंड द इफिशियंसी ऑफ डी सल्फराइजेशन प्रोसेस is given as 98 percent so with this given data we need to estimate first the amount of ash which is entering the plant per year so first we need to estimate the amount of ash entering the plant per year so ash entering per year can be estimated using the given data because we know the 8.5 percent of ash is present in the given coal sample that means 8.5 kg ash per 100 kg of coal sample is and on daily basis 2000 kg of coal is consumed in a plant so that is so per day basis it is around 2000 kg so on yearly basis means 365 days in a year so once we do this multiplication here we we'll get the answer in the form of 62000050 kg ash per year so the ash entering the plant per year is this much so here entering the plant right second we need to determine the annual sulfur dioxide emissions from the plant before and after the scrubbing process so in this case basically 2000 kg per day of the coal is getting consumed in thermal power plant for the energy generation purpose and with the help of that we need to determine the annual sulfur dioxide emission 
from this thermal power plant before and after the scrubbing process. So, from the coal composition We know the annual consumption of sulfur in given coal sample that is 1.5 kg of sulfur per 100 kg of coal because in the composition of the given fuel it contains around 1.5 percent sulfur and on daily basis 2000 kg of coal is consumed in the plant again on yearly basis right so once we do this small multiplication here we we'll get the value in the form of 10950 kilogram sulfur so annual consumption of sulfur is around this much and as per the assumption complete combustion of sulfur is taking place in this combustion process as a result the entire sulfur is getting oxidized to form SO2. So, from this from this stoichiometric equation we know like 1 kilo mole of sulfur react to produce 1 kilo mole of sulfur dioxide that is 32 kilogram of sulfur burns to produce 64 kilogram of SO2. So, therefore, one zero nine five zero kilogram of sulfur burns on suppose yearly basis to produce twenty one nine hundred kilogram SO two and this is before the scrubbing and this is before scrubbing process. So, here simply actually we have to do uh, multiplication and the division then we will get the sulphur dioxide which is getting produced if this much amount of the sulphur is burned on yearly basis. So, just by doing this cross multiplication and the division we will get this value of 21,900. So, just by simple the multiplication and the division we will get the amount of sulphur dioxide produced when this much amount of the sulphur burn in the plant.
since the efficiency of this limestone flue gas desulfurization unit is given here and it is around 98 percent. So, that means around 98 percent of sulfur dioxide is getting removed during this scrubbing operation. Since we know the amount of SO2 which is getting produced before the scrubbing operation, so with the help of this value we can calculate the amount of the sulfur dioxide which is getting removed during this desulfurization process here. Since 98 percent of sulfur dioxide is removed by scrubbing operation, so we can calculate the amount of the SO2 which is getting removed by the scrubbing operation that is 98 percent of and the value comes out to be around 21,462 kilogram of sulphur dioxide. So, this is the amount of sulphur dioxide which is getting removed in the scrubbing unit and as a result 2 percent of sulphur dioxide is emitted after scrubbing operation. because 98 percent of the sulphur dioxide is getting removed in the scrubbing process as the efficiency of the scrubbing process is given as 98 percent. So, ultimately 2 percent of the sulphur dioxide is emitted after the scrubbing process that means 2 percent of the sulphur dioxide is observed in the exhaust emission and that can be calculated as 2 percent of the total sulphur dioxide which is produced in the plant and which comes out to be 438 kilogram sulphur dioxide and this is after scrubbing. So, this particular value is before scrubbing and this represent the value after scrubbing. Now, next we need to determine the amount of CO2 emissions produced from the sulphur dioxide scrubbing process. because we know the sulphur dioxide emissions can be reduced using limestone flue gas desulphurization process and this removal is taking place as per the following mechanism. And this concept of sulphur dioxide removal using this desulfurization process is discussed in one of the lecture in this module and we use uh, the same concept here to find out the amount of CO2 emission which is produced 
from the sulfur dioxide scrubbing process. So, if you recollect, we saw this mechanism of sulfur dioxide removal using this desulfurization process in one of the lecture where this sulfur dioxide is getting scrubbed in this limestone slurry in presence of oxygen and then it forms calcium sulfate dihydrate which is also known as gypsum along with CO2. So, basically here one mole of sulfur dioxide produces one mole of carbon dioxide. So, as per this mechanism, one mole of sulfur dioxide produced one mole of carbon dioxide. Therefore, sixty four kg sulfur dioxide. produce 44 kg carbon dioxide. So, here this is basically the molecular weight and this is the molecular weight of CO2 right. So, as we know the sulfur dioxide scrubbed or we can say removed by scrubbing unit is equal to 21,462 kg sulfur dioxide. So, this much amount of the sulfur dioxide is getting removed by scrubbing unit. So, now carbon dioxide produce after scrubbing of sulfur dioxide can be calculated directly here like 44 is a molecular weight of carbon dioxide into 21462 because this much amount of the sulfur dioxide is getting removed in the scrubbing process. So, once you multiply this term to carbon dioxide and then divided by the 64 that is the kilogram of sulfur dioxide right. So, we will get the answer in the form of 14000 kilogram carbon dioxide that is after scrubbing because here this much amount of the sulfur dioxide is getting removed in the scrubbing unit. So, as a result equivalent amount of the carbon dioxide is getting produced. So, once we know that one mole of sulfur dioxide is producing one mole of carbon dioxide and on kilogram basis it is like 64 kg of sulfur dioxide and 44 kg of carbon dioxide and we know this much amount of the sulfur dioxide is getting scrubbed in the scrubbing unit. So, ultimately once this much amount of the sulfur dioxide is getting scrubbed, so it will evolve this much amount of the carbon dioxide. So, simply we are just doing the cross multiplication divided by this uh, sulfur dioxide quantity here 14,755 kilogram carbon dioxide and that is after scrubbing. So, I hope this is clear like how to estimate the sulfur dioxide emission as well as the carbon dioxide emission from this particular mechanism and this concept we have discussed in detail in one of the lecture in this module. With this we will end our lecture here. In the next lecture which will be the first lecture of the module 3, we will discuss about energy from bio based feedstock. In that we will discuss about the availability of the feedstock material composition analysis and the properties of the feedstock material and preparation of the fuel 
pellets using bio additives thank you